the third important layer of these horizontal requisites of the digital age refers to the human component, the human capability, skills, and also cultural changes. So this has to do on the one hand with usage skills, what is sometimes called digital literacy, so that you and me can use these technologies. It has to do with the cultural change of adoption, but it also has to do with more advanced uh, human resources that specialize, for example, in software and computer services. This graph tells us something about this very crucial group of human capital in the digital age. Let's see if you can read the graph and make sense of it. So we have two axes in this graph, first of all. We have a horizontal axis, which is usually referred to as the x-axis, and we have a vertical axis, which is usually referred to as the y-axis. These are just definitions, but they're very easy to remember because the y has this long leg to it, and that's why it's the vertical, whereas the x is kind of like little flat on the floor, right? That's easy, that's easy to remember. Um, and on the y-axis you have now uh, the number of software and computer service employees as a percentage of total employment. That means, for example, here Finland, um, in Finland we have 2% of the total employment working in software and computer services. So these are basically IT guys, right? <laughs> on the x-axis, we have the amount of software and computer service spending as a percentage of the total ICT spending or the total spending on digital technology. And we can see that some countries here, for example, the US, uh, spends 45%, almost half of its entire IT budget on software and computer services. The rest well, it spends on hardware um, and in the US half a percent of the total employment works in the software and computer service industry. So now that we know a little bit more about it, let's see what we can read with regard to the distribution of the different countries in this graph. One thing that becomes clear is that more developed countries like the USA, UK, Switzerland, Finland spend a larger percentage of their ICT budget on software and computer services than developing countries like the Philippines, Mexico, Malaysia and so forth, Costa Rica, who spend more on hardware, have to spend more on hardware and have less left over to spend on software because as we saw in the cube, hardware infrastructure comes first. You need, first of all, the hardware, and then you can see how much you can spend in services, in data analysis, in software, in, in database development, and so forth. So developed countries, since they have also in general larger ICT budgets, have more also to spend on these kind of, of software services. A second thing that we can see now if we combine these two axes is that there is a positive correlation between the amount of money that you can spend on software and computer services and the share of software and computer service employees in your economy. So developed countries spend more on software and have more uh, software and computer service employees, whereas developing countries down here have less of both. The result is this kind of positive correlation on this diagonal axis. Now, very interestingly, if you compare some of them, uh, these differences are actually striking. So, for example, if we compare Mexico down here, in Mexico, 0.2% of the employees work in the software industry, and in Finland, 2%. Now, that doesn't seem like a big difference, 0 0.2 and 2, but think of it this way. 2%, that's basically 1 in 50. That means there's one IT guy in Finland up here, 2%, per 50 employees in the rest of the economy. So this IT guy has to attend to 50 other ones. That's a big task. I mean, they don't only have problems on their computers. This IT guy is in charge of digitalizing companies, helping the government to digitalize its processes, helping to create databases and hospital and so forth. Now in Mexico, that's one for 500. So it means there are 500 employees 
and they basically have to wait for or have to fight for, I don't know what they're going to do, to get access to this one IT guy who can help them to digitalize their companies, hospital, municipalities, uh, and educational institutions, schools. So there's a lot of pressure, a lot of demand uh, for these kind of human resources um, that has to do with the software and computer service industry, but increasingly, since this also has to do with databases, with statisticians. And to say it uh, with the words of Hall Varian, he is a former professor also at the University of California in Berkeley at the iSchool, and now he's the chief economist at Google. He keeps saying that the sexy job in the next 10 years will be statistician. Now that sounds a little bit funny, but actually, yes, it is true because these databases have to be analyzed. And if you look at the salary scales, it's pretty impressive. So these are recent salary scales here. These are all software programs that, uh, that if you have the skill on managing them, you get these kind of salaries. R is a statistical software program that we teach also in our department, many departments uh, across the UC system and across the country teach these kind of softwares especially R, and uh, you see that you have a salary, an average salary here of $115,000 per year. That's around $10,000 per month just by knowing a statistical software program. Uh, and you can see that also technology salaries are the fastest increasing salaries across the country. And there is a large demand. It is projected that there are hundreds of thousands of people with ICT skills are missing only in the American labor market over the next 10 years. And even millions are missing um, in terms of data management skills. So the IT revolution also hinges a lot on this third layer of the requisites for digitalization, which has to do with the human capabilities.